Good morning. Apologies for not being there in person, but thank you for inviting me to speak about fake eye wells, new indications, new sizing techniques. So in my financial disclosures, I do have an interest in this talk because I, as you know, have developed high frequency ultrasound technology with colleagues at Cornell that applies uh, very directly to this talk. And the Artemis technology, which was commercialized by ArcScan as the Insight 100, uh, is capable of scanning, of course, corneal layers as well as the anterior segment and giving the high resolution imaging required for the precision prediction measurements required in ICL sizing. Well, there aren't really any new indications here in the United States other than the acceptance of cylinder and the EVO. Um, as you can see, outside of US, we have uh, way more expanded indications, including now uh, a new presbyopic lens, uh, of which there is now one publication. We know that the ICL is, an, is a phenomenal uh, vision correction option for patients with exceedingly high accuracy, very, very high quality night vision, um, and very fast recovery. But the complications related to the ICL, by and large, are due to sizing issues. Well, we know historically that white to white plus uh, half a millimeter was the standard way of sizing this for years until Lobizolo came and suggested sulcus to sulcus. Doherty, after the FDA trials, um, published a table using sulcus to sulcus sizing. Kojima then added the sulcus to sulcus lens rise. And we were using the Kojima formula with the 60 megahertz, very high frequency ultrasound system, hoping to get better results because of the higher resolution. So our formula uh, found on a, on a multivariate regression analysis that the ciliary body inner diameter was the most significant factor in predicting uh, the volt uh, after ICL insertion. We also included sulcus to sulcus lens rise and the scotopic pupil si uh, size at 0.04 lux pre-op. But the sulcus to sulcus is now no longer required because the ciliary body inner diameter is so powerful at predicting uh, the predicted volt. So, the other thing that we uh, changed was that rather than using a formula that would tell us what lens to put in based on clinical parameters, we instead are providing a table that gives the predicted volt for any of the four sizes of lens so that the clinician can choose the volt that they want rather than having to put up with the one that the formula chooses for an average response. This formula now published in the Journal of Refractive Surgery is now available free of charge at iclsizing.com. Uh, you can enter the data and use this formula freely. So the study proceeded by uh, initially analyzing a set of 42 eyes that had been implanted uh, to create a first version of the formula with coefficients. And we then treated 36 eyes using this formula. A second training set was then analyzed with 78 eyes and new coefficients were derived uh, which were then tested on a further 69 eyes. In our publication, we calculated the results that would have been achieved by sulcus to sulcus, ultrasound-based formulae, angle-to-angle-based OCT formulae, and the white-to-white -white, uh, OCOS website. So when looking at the achieved central volt relative to the target intended by the formula predicted, we see that the interquartile range of the training set using the Ojima formula was 391, and this was reduced to 169 for our first formula and 131 microns on the second formula. So, so comparing to all of the other methodologies for ICL sizing, um, you can see that the interquartile range is uh, significantly better using the ciliary body inner diameter than using anterior segment OCT measurements and certainly white to white. And when we compare, therefore, the lens selected by our formula versus what would have been selected using other formulas, we see that, for example, using white to white, 17% of the eyes would have been two sizes larger than predicted using uh, high frequency ultrasound and the Reinstein formula. Here's an example of a patient that we treated. So uh, you can get these results by entering the data into the iclsizing.com website. But essentially here, we have our formula predicting that this patient should have a 12.6 in order to get about a 570 micron or 550 micron volt. In actual fact, this patient ended up 250 microns higher than that at 800 microns. Now, when we look at the predicted OCOS website, with a 13.7, we would have probably ended up over a thousand. And when you add 
250 to that, which is what we got, 250 more than predicted, that would have been 1300. So we go from having an okay volt with an open angle to probably a situation where we'd be considering an, uh, an ICL exchange. This is the one of the first times that we've ever seen in the literature, I think it was the first time, uh, a target volt versus achieved volt. And you can see that our initial first formula uh, was slightly off, but once we adjusted the coefficients with larger numbers, this became a one-to-one -one relationship. Now, when considering the accuracy of the volt control, we had 61% of the eyes within 100 microns of predicted and 96% within 300 microns of predicted. Now, compared to other formulas, this is really an order of magnitude better. OCT, of course, is good, uh, but nowhere near as good, and it, certainly better than white to white. Uh, sizing itself, but nowhere near as good as using um, high-frequency ultrasound with the ciliary body inner diameter. So this formula is available online. Anybody can use it at iclsizing.com. And of course, it's based on new parameters, ciliary body inner diameter, scotopic pupil size pre-op, and it gives you a table for each lens size what volt would be predicted. So we all know that sizing works pretty well with the white-to-white -white sizing in the OCOS website, and the exchange rate is, well, depending on who you're talking to, between 1% and 5%. And I guess it depends on the tolerance of the assessment of the surgeon as to what he's comfortable leaving inside the eye. But the reason why, in our practice, we put subject every patient for uh, to this examination, which takes 10 minutes, is because there, we need to find the outliers. It's the outliers that cause the, um, the exchanges. So there are situations where the sulcus is the same size as the angle. There are situations where the sulcus is larger than the angle. There are situations where the sulcus is smaller than the angle. And there are situations where there are cysts which can affect the volt. And so putting ICLs in behind the iris without visualization and accurate biometric uh, data leads to these small numbers of complications, uh, which I believe now are fully avoidable and you know, require a little bit more effort from the surgeon's standpoint, but not an effort that I think any patient would object to. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.